Well, with me now is Shireen Joshi. She's an associate professor at Georgetown University. She has studied economic development, pollution, and its effects on health and human capital outcomes. Shireen, thank you so much for joining me. I mean, I think in the short term, it's quite obvious what the impact is. There's this lost productivity. We've seen people dying from this. But what are the long-term economic impacts of this type of smog, which is paralyzing a major city in India? Well, I think when it, for starters, one of the biggest impacts of this is on people's long-term health. You know, a recent study from the University of Chicago showed that if India or Delhi's, the entire Indo-Gangetic Plains air quality were to be brought up to World Health Organization appropriate standards, life expectancy would go up by as much as 7.1 years. So take the flip of that, right? What is bad air quality? And this happens routinely in India year after year. What does this do to people's health, morbidity, the health of their lungs, the health of their bodies is quite serious for their long-term you know, life expectancy. Are there any numbers around it right now? Yeah, this is one of the best estimates we have is the impact of sustained exposure to air that is right now 12 times higher than mm. World Health Organization admissible limits. But even on a normal day in Delhi, it goes up by three or four times as much as that. That has sustained effects on life expectancy, morbidity. Mm -hmm. There is impact on even cognitive um, functioning. You know, um, a UNICEF report saying that sustained exposure to bad air can impact br healthy brain development mm -hmm. in children. All of this is a deep concern. I mean, part of the problem is all of the cars that are on the road. So there are over 10 million cars on, on the roads in, in Delhi. But this is also a sign of a growing middle class. And as India continues to elevate itself, more people are going to be driving cars. So what is the government to do to sort of strike this balance between wanting to be a middle income type country, but also making sure that the air is breathable? Well, so two things there. One is vehicular pollution is actually not the biggest um, contributor to the air quality smog problem we see in Delhi. It, at this time of year, the biggest drivers of this problem are actually crop burning mm -hmm. in the surrounding states. It's just harvest season. It was the festival of Diwali, which is when farmers typically you know, harvest crops and then to clear the land, you have um, the use of you know, burning. So the problem there is that three states around Delhi and in the Indo-Gangetic Plain more broadly, we need to see creative solutions to get farmers to adopt alternative methods to clearing you know, the, 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 the brush, if you will. I mean, in other countries, they fine the farmers Correct. that are doing this type of slash and burn activities. Is this something that you think would work in, in India? Absolutely. And so to your point earlier, even on vehicular contrib contributions to the air pollution problem, I think what we have in Delhi, and not just Delhi, but the entire Indo-Gangetic Plain, is a challenge of governance. Mm -hmm. What you have in India is multiple state actors. So if you are a woman waking up in Delhi on an average morning and worried about your child's, you know, um, your child's health, and you notice the air is is badly smoggy, who do you blame is actually a very complicated question. There are three state governments in the surrounding area. There's the national government, there's the Delhi government. Unlike New York or London, where at a time like this, you could go contact the mayor's office, in India, there is no, or in Delhi, I would say, there's no obvious person you can go to. Mm -hmm. So who do you blame? Who do you hold accountable? And if you want to tackle the deeper causes of this, crop burning, the use of unclean energy by poor people as a basic source of sustenance in the colder months, you know, how do you tackle this without tackling these problems of coordination across governments? So that is what I see. You know, the Supreme Court of India routinely bans yeah. fireworks. Mm -hmm. You know, you take and it's something that yeah they they did at Diwali as well. Yeah, I mean, so it's simply, going to take this coordinated uh, effort uh, because it's not just New Delhi, obviously. It's a lot of uh, Indian uh, cities that are fighting this type of smog. Thank you so much for for joining us, Shireen Joshi, there, associate professor at Georgetown uh, University. Coming.